for in video regarding pharmacology. Like, share and subscribe the channel. Today I will discuss about classification, mechanism and site of action of antihypertensive drugs in a systematic way. Let's start. Our blood pressure is primarily controlled by the sympathetic nervous system and the kidneys through their influence on cardiac output and peripheral vascular resistance. We can say blood pressure is the product of cardiac output and peripheral vascular resistance. The change in cardiac output or peripheral vascular resistance causes the change in the blood pressure. The cardiac output means to amount of blood pumped by the left ventricle of the heart in one contraction that is stroke volume multiplied by heart rate. Cardiac output can be increased by the increase in heart rate by sympathetic stimulation through activation of beta-1 adrenoceptors. The stroke volume is directly related to blood volume, the blood volume is largely regulated by the kidneys. On the other hand, peripheral vascular resistance or PVR is the resistance offered by the circulatory system in flow of the blood. The peripheral vascular resistance depends on vascular smooth muscle tone in the various vascular beds. The sympathetic nervous system stimulates arteriolar smooth muscle contraction through alpha-1 adrenoceptors increase peripheral vascular resistance. Similarly, angiotensin II causes vasoconstriction and increases peripheral vascular resistance and causing an increase in blood pressure. Antihypertensive drugs act to suppress excessive sympathetic activity and modify renal function to counteract the mechanisms responsible for hypertension. Antihypertensive drugs either reduce cardiac output or reduce peripheral vascular resistance. And sometime by reducing both cardiac output and peripheral vascular resistance. Antihypertensive drug largely classified as in four major categories diuretics, sympatholytic drugs, angiotensin inhibitors and vasodilators. The first category of antihypertensive drugs is diuretics. Diuretic drugs promote sodium and water excretion and lower blood pressure by reduction of blood volume. The thiazides like hydrochlorothiazide and the loop diuretics like furosemide are mostly used for treatment of hypertension. Thiazides are used in mild hypertension, and the loop diuretics are used in moderate and severe hypertension and in hypertensive emergencies. Next category of drugs is sympatholytic drugs or sympathoplegics. Sympatholytic drugs interfere with sympathetic control of cardiovascular function. They reduce cardiac output and total peripheral resistance. Sympatholytic are subdivided four types based on their anatomic site of action. Central sympatholytic or centrally active agents. Clonidine and methyl dopa are selective alpha-2 receptor agonists. They cause a decrease in sympathetic outflow from the central vasomotor center to the circulation primarily through activation of alpha-2 adrenoceptors in the brain stem medulla. Methyl dopa is a prodrug, it is converted to methyl norepinephrine in the brain. Clonidine and methyl dopa reduce blood pressure by reducing cardiac output and vascular resistance. Ganglion blocking drugs. Hexamethonium and triamthophan are ganglion blocking agents. They blocks nicotinic receptors in autonomic ganglia and inhibits transmission between preganglionic and postganglionic neurons in the autonomic nervous system. They are extremely powerful blood pressure lowering drugs. But because their adverse effects are severe, they are now considered obsolete. Postganglionic adrenergic nerve terminal blockers. The examples of postganglionic adrenergic nerve terminal blockers are reserpine, guanathidine, and guanadrol. Reserpine depletes the norepinephrine storage from the postganglionic adrenergic nerve terminal. Guanathidine and guanadryl block the release of the norepinephrine from the postganglionic adrenergic nerve terminal. These drugs lower the blood pressure by lowering sympathetic tone. In high dosages, these drugs are very efficacious, but they produce severe adverse effects and are now considered obsolete for hypertension. Adrenoceptor blockers or adrenergic blockers. Adrenergic blockers are further subdivided on the basis of the adrenoceptor they blocks. Alpha-1 selective antagonists like prazosin, doxazosin, terazosin are moderately effective antihypertensive drugs. Alpha blockers reduce vascular resistance and venous return. The non-selective alpha blockers phentolamine and phenoxybenzamine are of no value in chronic hypertension because they causes excessive tachycardia. Beta blockers are used very heavily in the treatment of hypertension. Beta adrenoceptor antagonists. 
The beta blockers lower blood pressure by blocking beta-1 adrenoceptors in the heart they reduce cardiac output by decreasing the heart rate and contractility. Blockade of beta-1 receptors in renal juxtaglomerular cells inhibits renin secretion, which in turn reduces the formation of angiotensin II and the subsequent release of aldosterone. Beta blockers are classified as non-selective beta blockers includes, nadolol, propranolol, and timolol. Non-selective beta blockers blocks both beta-1 and beta-2 and may cause bronchoconstriction and are unsafe for asthmatic patients. Beta-1 selective blockers are atenolol, metoprolol and bisoprolol. They selective block beta-1 receptor in heart. Drug-like carvedilol and levetilol block both alpha and beta receptors and are very effective antihypertensive agents. Next category of antihypertensive is angiotensin antagonists and renin inhibitor. There are two groups of angiotensin antagonists the angiotensin converting enzyme ACE inhibitors and the angiotensin II receptor blockers ARBs. The ACE inhibitors include captopril, enalapril and remipril. The ACE inhibitors inhibit the enzyme known as angiotensin converting enzyme, which is responsible for conversion of angiotensin I to powerful vasoconstrictive agent angiotensin II. The angiotensin receptor antagonists include losartan, candesartan, erbosartan and valsartan and many more. Angiotensin receptor antagonists competitively inhibit angiotensin II at its AT1 receptor sites and block the vasoconstrictive effect of angiotensin II. Renin inhibitor aliskyrin is the first orally effective direct renin inhibitor to be approved for treatment of hypertension. It binds to the active site of renin, preventing cleavage of angiotensinogen and formation of angiotensin 1. The next category of drugs is vasodilators. The drugs that dilate blood vessels are called vasodilators. They cause relaxation in smooth muscle of blood vessels and reduce peripheral vascular resistance. Vasodilators act by four major mechanisms, release of nitric oxide, opening of potassium channels, which lead to hyperpolarization, blockade of calcium channels, and activation of D1 dopamine receptors. Hydrolyzine and minoxidil. These older vasodilators have more effect on arterioles than on veins. They are orally active and suitable for chronic therapy. Hydrolyzine apparently acts through the release of nitric oxide from endothelial cells. However, it is rarely used at high dosage because of its toxicity. Minoxidil is extremely efficacious, and systemic administration is reserved for severe hypertension. Minoxidil is a prodrug, its metabolite, minoxidil sulfate, is a potassium channel opener that hyperpolarizes and relaxes vascular smooth muscle. Calcium channel blocking agents. Calcium channel blockers causes blocking calcium ion channels in the plasma membranes of smooth muscle and causes relaxation in vascular smooth muscle and vasodilation. They have a greater effect on arteriolar smooth muscle than on venous smooth muscle, and their effect on blood pressure is primarily caused by a reduction in PVR. Whereas all of the calcium channel blocking agents relax vascular smooth muscle, diltiazem and verapamil also have significant effects on cardiac tissue and can reduce the heart rate and cardiac output. Most calcium channel blocking agents, including amlodipine, philodipine, isratipine, nicardipine, and nifedipine belong to the dihydropyridine class. The calcium channel blocking agents are among the most widely recommended drugs for the initial treatment of high blood pressure, and they are often combined with diuretics or angiotensin inhibitors. Nitroprusside and phenaldepam. These are parenteral vasodilators are used in hypertensive emergencies. Nitroprusside is short-acting and infused continuously. They produce vasodilation by release of nitric oxide. Phenaldepam activates vascular dopamine D1 receptors and produces vasodilation in systemic vascular beds, including coronary, renal, and mesenteric vessels. It has a short duration of action and is used for hypertensive emergencies. This is the rapid review of antihypertensives. For informative video regarding pharmacology. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe the channel.